Good morning. Hey, be sure to get my audiobook, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. It's right there. And there's some other goodies for you right there in that little box. Tap that box and you might be golden. I was um, up getting ready for the day, working on my stuff. I have a thought. You ever have that kind of thought that you just you wake up and you're like, that's it. It was it was like that. It was it was that kind of thought. I was answering the question to what was going on with eBay. Someone was saying, you know, eBay does a lot of testing with fake ads. They've been doing it for years. It just kind of hit me. All of the stuff that's been going on for the last six, eight months with eBay, the culling of sellers, getting rid of people. And it's like eBay FBA coming. And it makes sense because eBay is getting warehouses. They're hiring people, getting trader partners. Um, I think if you sell really esoteric stuff that you have to go out and find, you're going to be okay. It's going to be very hard for them to source that. But common products, new products, they're going to own that. It's just a matter of months or years. They're going to own that. It's, it's going to be the same thing. And once again, I still highly recommend Amazon FBA. But Amazon will get the metrics of what you're selling and go out and get that product and sell against you. That's just how the game is played. Not mad at them. They own the platform. They can do that. And it got me to thinking, eBay has crazy metrics on what sell. They have information you don't have. They have access to algorithms you don't have so they can make a really good decision on a product with awesome information why wouldn't they go out and do an eBay FBA I think that's what this eBay valet program is about as a testing ground to get the warehouse together because Amazon has pretty much a decade start on them on the FBA thing but I think they can do it and this is going to be really surprising. I think for you, the seller, it's going to be turbulent waters. But when you look at it from a strictly a business standpoint, what is the most time consuming part of eBay for you? Other than sourcing. But sourcing can be fun. Sourcing can be fun. You know, spending money getting stuff. It's listing that was all one of our groups and people were like putting up listings and stuff and like i said i don't sell on ebay i don't know how long it takes to do a listing anymore but you know it's like i got 10 listings up i don't know what their process is but i do remember listing took a long time because first you have to take the picture then you have to do well actually even before that you have to do your research you have to just like completed listings look at this look at this and maybe go to terra peak if you got that type of item so you could easily spend five to ten minutes just researching doing that stuff per item so you would still have to do the research but you wouldn't have to do the picture taking you wouldn't have to do the listing and also you get away from the or well, in my mind I think you get away from the DSRs I don't know how that works but I feel that this is coming because you know that's like well I don't sell on eBay. I don't really. There's a ton of people with eBay books and stuff out there. So I wasn't. And like I said, I don't sell on eBay. But this just hit me that this is what's coming, and that's one of the reasons that they got rid of a lot of people to force them to come back as uh, FBA. I mean, if that ain't pimping, I don't know what is. It's like we're gonna fire you, but we're gonna make you come back to us and get even more money out of you. <laughs> I guarantee you, I guarantee you that's going to be the deal because it gives them, because understand, and if you're selling on Amazon or you're selling on eBay, those are not your customers until you can get that email address onto one of your own lists and sell to them direct, they're not your customer. It gives them a greater ability to please their customer by handling, you know, the tricky parts and stuff and maybe even at some point have optical inspection. So if your stuff comes in, it's like, ah, reject, Pfft, screen flashes red and your shit goes down a chute into a trash disposal. I think that's what's coming. 
eBay FBA, I think it's coming, uh, maybe 18 months away, maybe two years, but I think it's coming because from a data standpoint, it makes sense because, you know, half in the business and hiring people, it's very hard to standardize behavior. You know, they try, they have policies and procedures, but you can have 100 sellers and 100 sellers are going to behave in 100 different ways, whereas by bringing everything in house by creating you know an oversight program that they fully control they can enhance the customer experience much more so readily and there will still be a lot of eBay sellers out there because for those sellers who sell the odd the eccentric the esoteric the hard to get refurb stuff you know they'll still be there but if you are like wholesaling selling new stuff the feathers gonna start flying because you're gonna you're gonna like That shotgun pellet's gonna be up in your ass because they're gunning for you. Because that's become a huge part of their business selling these new stuff, like you know, cell phone accessories and things like this. And who knows? They some of these companies you think are as like uh Sunny Brook Inc. That actually might be eBay in a in a stealth mode. It's like sold by eBay. It's coming. It's coming. It's it's coming. It's kind of crazy when you think about it because when you pull the emotion out of it and you know if you've been here a while you know my experience with ebay and like one of the reasons i don't fuck with them in that regard but from a business standpoint from a data driven standpoint it makes sense on all fronts it really does and it's kind of crazy but you know go ahead chop it up in the comments put in your two cents your two fifty and uh Tell me if I'm, you think I'm right or wrong, but that's what I see is happening. And also, I've got a bet going on with some people. It's a five-year bet. In five years, five, seven years, you ain't going to be able to find shit in the thrift store. You you will not. That's decent. There's there's some, two big things that's happening. One of the reasons there's so much stuff in thrift stores is because we're a country of excess. We have a lot of excess. We have more excess than any other country in the world. The American standard of living is in a state of decline. You're having a lot of people suffering. You have a lot of people on food stamps. You, it's, you cannot have a bunch of poor people, struggling people, and still have tremendous excess. The reason we have tremendous excess is we still have a robust group of people who still have. And they donate. And they put stuff in there. And I know people are like, no, Glenn, it'll always be there. Yeah, kind of like Social Security, right? It'll always be there, right? If something like Social Security can go away, why not these stores standardizing their procedures, pulling out all the good stuff and selling it themselves? Why couldn't that happen? So I'm just saying, just saying. Now, understand if you're an enterprising hustler, if you are a go-getter, you will find a way to get product to sell. I'm not saying that that's going to disappear. There will be new opportunities. I'm just saying current opportunities are going to experience a serious, serious revision. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side.